What was one of the greatest catastrophes in the early 20th century where about 1,500 people die in the cold waters of the Atlantic Ocean? I will give you a couple seconds to think about it. And if you say the Titanic, yes, you are correct. The Titanic was one of those catastrophes in the early 20th century that brought the engineering world into a stop. But why did the Titanic fail? How is one of the engineering marvels of the 20th century able to sink so quickly? There was one ship that was supposed to be unsinkable by God, according to the engineers. Of course, we know that it crashed against an iceberg. But how was it that an iceberg, a piece of ice, was able to sink this ship so rapidly? This disaster caught the eye of many engineers and scientists around the world. And as scientists and engineers, they got together to determine the actual cause of failure of the metal. After many tests, they found out that the fracture on the surface of the boat looked brittle. It still hadn't been around that long when the Titanic was built. It was one of the recent discoveries by industry, a new material that was stronger than any other construction made before. Therefore, they used it on the Titanic, thinking that it would withstand any collision or any impact. After further testing, they discovered that the main cause of failure was not the steel by itself, but the cold waters of the Atlantic. How was so that a material apparently so strong was able to behave so brutally under these conditions? Did you know that the Titanic had two sister ships, the Olympic and the Britannic? And even though these three ships lived different lives, they all had something in common. All three of them met a similar fate regarding their failure. They all faced brittle failure one way or another through the course of their lifetime. And once again, this is due to the metal that they were built with, that type of steel. After multiple tests, the scientists discovered that it was the cold temperatures of the Atlantic that affected the integrity of the steel. The cold waters had affected the integrity of the steel, making it weaker making it more brittle. So when it crashed against the iceberg, instead of acting ductily and absorbing some of the energy on the impact, it instead acted brittly and it just fractured apart easily. It was the cold temperature of the waters that the engineers hadn't prepared for when they were building the ship that caused one of the greatest tragedies in the early 20th century. The unsinkable ship sank because of cold water. In this lab, what we're doing is we're trying to determine the temperature at which uh, a certain metal uh, changes from being brittle to being ductile. We have covered this uh, topic already before when we were doing the tensile test. Like I told you, that some metals are more brittle than others, um, but this property can also change uh, depending on temperature. Some metals, as the temperature decreases, as we get colder, they behave more brittlely. And as we increase the temperature, they become more ductile. So this is what we're trying to determine. According to your lab, uh, the question that they're asking you is that they have this uh, new alloy, new steel alloy, that they will use for uh, Arctic applications. And they will be in temperatures around negative 40 Celsius. Um, so they're asking you whether this metal that they will use will be um, suitable for these conditions. And they want you to test this by determining the ductile to brittle transition temperature of the, of the material. If you think that this uh, ductile to brittle transition temperature is higher than at the conditions at which uh, the material will be taking place, then maybe you may want to encourage them to look for another, uh, another different alloy. But if the ductile, to brittle the ductile to brittle transition temperature is below that, then there should be no problem for um, this metal to work. And remember, in certain cases, we want the metal to fail barely, and in other cases, we want the metal to uh, fail by ducto. Um, but we don't want to get, you know, a brittle fracture in the middle out of nowhere without, you know, without any uh, notice. When we see ductal fractures, we will see necking, and we will see the metal starting to yield, but with brittle, uh, sometimes that will not be as visible and we will just get a straight up failure, especially in those type of uh, 
weather with where it's really, really, really cold. So that's your assignment for today. So the way to test that is we have over here uh, a sample of, uh, of metal, of the alloy that they are going to test. So we have two of the samples. And what you will do is you will uh, basically do an impact test on these to determine the radial transition temperature. And we will determine that uh, DVTT, that's what we call it, that DVTT, we're going to be using three different tests to determine that. Um, the first test is to determine the energy midway of the energy they absorb during impact. So we're going to be impacting these samples and depending on how much energy we, they absorb, um, we will be able to determine where that transition happens. And remember, uh, just keep in mind that we, will, we are going to be doing multiple tests of this. Every class, every session we will be doing a different temperature and by the end of the lab, we will get all of our data to be able to get you know, a, a comprehensive set of data points that we can use to analyze this. Uh, so that's one way of the methods by determining the energy of the impact, the energy they absorb during impact. Uh, and the second method will be the lateral expansion. So we will be measuring these little samples um, by lateral expansion and we will see how they deform after impact. Do they expand? Do they contract? and we will be measuring that. Once we get all of the data points, we can once again determine the DVTT. And the last uh, method that we can use to determine that, it's the, the vis it's a visual test. So basically, we will break, be breaking these samples and based on how, the, based how they look like on the area where they are broken, um, based on that fracture, we have uh, another page over here, uh, you can see, and we will try to visually uh, determine their, you know, their percentage of ductility. Based on what we see over here, we can determine like all oh, these faults between this percentage and this percentage, and that's how we can also determine the DVTTs. So the first thing to do is that we need to uh, mark this specimen. So we're gonna be marking them as number one and number two. So we have this over here, um, this indenter and we're going to be using this to notch the specimen so i'm going to put one here this is like a pen and it makes a little uh point so i'm going to mark this one over here on the other side too all right so this is specimen number one i don't know if you can see it over here uh it has a little hole over there and that's number one that's how we're going to determine you know which one is which and on this one i'm going to put two indentions and this will be number two. So now that I marked them, I'm going to be measuring their lateral expansion, just a measurement of um, what is, you know, these are obviously not perfectly flat. We see them flat, but of course there's always some deviation. So we're gonna be measuring that uh, first and then after testing to see how much that deviation increased. You know, metals expand and contract with uh, temperature and we want to measure that. So. I'm going to put over here uh, my sample one, and I'm gonna be doing first the marked face, and after the opposite face, which is the unmarked. So that's how, that's how we're going to determine the marked and the unmarked face. So I'm gonna get my marked face. I'm gonna put it over here uh, in this uh, in, in this gauge that measures, you know, the lateral expansion. I'm just gonna uh, firmly press it on the bottom of the anvil, and I'm going to get a reading over here. Let me show you. So this is what we are doing. I'm pressuring over here the anvil, and you can see over here from the top that this is in inches, so this is 0 0.025, so that's a marked face. And now the unmarked face, and I'm gonna put it over here. And this one measures also 0 0.025 inches. Um, so that for the first one, we can record that, and I'm gonna do this one for the second one. So first, the marked face, uh, point twenty-five. That's good. Point zero twenty-five, and then the unmarked, and also about point zero twenty-five. All right, and we're gonna be measuring that after as well. So I'm gonna take the samples, and I'm gonna take you to the other room to continue measuring. <laughs>